Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from How Did You Solve? Today, we'll be learning how to figure out a problem regarding complex numbers. And specifically, we'll be delving into algebraic operations with complex numbers, finding the conjugates of a complex number, as well as its polar and exponential form. So if you're having a struggle with any of these, proceed with the video and you'll see me doing an example, a problem with all of these combined. Enjoy! So for question 4, we are told to consider the complex numbers u equals 1 plus 2i and v is equal to 2 plus i. A. Given that 1 over u plus 1 over v is equal to 6 square root of 2 over w, express w in the form a plus bi, where a and b are elements of real numbers. And then b. Find the, the conjugate of w and express it in the exponential form r e to the power of i theta. So let's begin with a. We have two values that we can substitute in, in u and v. So let's just do that first. 1 over, I'm going to color code this, 1 plus 2i, which is u, plus 1 over v, which is 2 plus i. All of that is equal to 6 square root of 2 over w. And w will be the unknown we're trying to solve for. So what we want to do first is, of, is of course, combine the fractions. However, we can't do that because we don't have like denominators. So to do that, we're just going to cross multiply. In fact, this is going to be very simple considering the numerators of both 1. So on the top, we're going to have 2 plus i plus 1 plus 2i. All of that over 1 plus 2i times 2 plus i. Again, the whole thing is equal to 6 square root of 2 over w. So now we're just going to combine like terms as well, combine like terms as well as distribute. And I'm just going to switch back into writing in full black, because now we know what the color coded values are. Um, so 2 plus 1 is 3, plus i plus 2i is 3i. So combine the real terms with the real terms, and then the imagined terms with the imaginary terms. And on the bottom, we just distribute and multiply. So 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times i is i. 2i times 2 is 4i. And then 2i times i is 2i squared. Now remember that i squared is equal to negative 1. So this will eventually cancel out. All of this is equal to 6 square root of 2 over w. Oops. So now let's combine like terms again on the bottom. 3 plus 3i over 2 plus 2i square root of 2. So I uh, have 2i power of 2. So this becomes 2 times negative 1, which becomes negative 2. And so these two get canceled out. And we're left with i plus 4i, which is 5i. All of that is equal to 6 square root of 2 over w. To make this simpler, we're going to factor out the 3 which will be helpful later. So factor out of 3, you're left with 1 plus i over 5i is equal to 6 square root of 2 over w. So now what you want to do in order to isolate the w is you want to cross multiply again. And we'll have, just put an arrow here. We'll have 3w, 1 plus i is equal to 6 square root of 2 times 5i. So this stays the same, 3w1 plus i. And then let's combine like terms here. 6 times 5 is 30. Square root of 2 remains. The i stays. So a way to simplify this would be dividing by 3 on both sides. So this cancels out, and this becomes 10. So we'll be left with w1 plus i is equal to 10 square root of 2i. We don't want to distribute the w here. It'll just complicate things, so we'll just leave it into a factored form. Um, and then to isolate w on its own, we'll divide both sides by 1 plus i. This is why I left it non -factor, uh, not factored out. I mean, this is why I left it non-distributed. So 1 divided by 1 plus i divided by 1 plus i. This gets out. w is equal to 10 square root of 2 i over 1 plus i. The next step would be to multiply by its conjugate to get rid of the imaginary part on the bottom. 
So we'll, get, we'll multiply this by 1 minus i, 1 minus i, that's the conjugate of 1 plus i, is equal to, distribute once more, 10 squared of 2i times 1 is equal to 10 squared of 2i. 10 squared of 2i minus, times minus uh, i, negative i, we'll get minus 10 squared of 2 i squared over 1 plus 1 is 1. I mean, 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, 1 times negative i is negative i. Positive i times 1 is plus i. And then plus i times negative i is minus i squared. So let's just combine terms once more. We'll have 10 squared of 2i stays the same. And then the i squared becomes a negative negative 1, so you multiply negative 10 square root of 2 by negative 1, and you'll get positive 10 square root of 2. And then at the bottom, you'll have minus i plus i cancel out. This is i squared, so it becomes negative 1. Negative times negative 1 is going to become positive 1, and then 1 plus 1 will be 2. So now we can just uh, split this fraction because we have an addition in the numerator with the same denominator at the bottom. So we'll have 10 square root of 2i over 2 plus 10 square root of 2 over 2. And now we can simplify. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Oh, sorry, not there. 10 over 2 is 5. These stay. 10 over 2 is 5 again. This stays. And now to just write it in the form a, uh, sorry, z is equal to a plus bi, so the real part comes first. We're going to rearrange for w is equal to five, uh, 5 square root of 2, excuse me, 5 square root of 2 plus 5 square root of 2i. So this is how you do the first part. So for b, we are asked to find the conjugate of w and express it in the form of re to the power of i theta. So the conjugate of any complex number is always going to be z, for example, is equal to a minus bi, z's conjugate. Instead of the regular z equals a plus bi, you make the imaginary part opposite. So it's going to be negative in this case. So let's just put that for w. You get the conjugate of w, w star, is equal to 5 square root of 2 for a. And then what we're changing here is the imaginary part is going to become the, the opposite, so minus 5 square root of 2 i. Now this is the first part of letter b, question b, which was to find the conjugate. Now the next part is to convert it into the exponential form, but to do that we're first going to have to find the polar form. Polar form. So I'm a very visual person, so I like to see it in action, rather than just straightforwardly go to it. So we're going to draw an argon diagram. Ooh, my lines are very bad. <laughs> the imaginary part goes on the y-axis, and then the real part goes on the x-axis. So for the real part, we have 5 square root of 2. And then the imaginary part, we have negative 5 square root of 2. So about the same distances, just on the bottom, the square root of 2. Now we're just going to connect these two to get our modulus. And the modulus will be useful in order to find the polar form, which is this equation here, which is r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Theta is the argument, r is the modulus. Technically, the modulus is defined as what, what, what looks like, for like the absolute value of z, but it can also be substituted in for r. Now to find the modulus, we can notice that this is a right triangle. So we can just use the Pythagorean identity, Pythagorean theorem. Um, so we'll have the modulus squared is equal to 5 square root of 2, all of that squared, plus negative 5 square root of 2, all of that squared. We get 5 square root of 2, uh, 5 square root of 2 to the power of 2 is 50, you get 25 times 2, and then again 50, you get 100. So the modulus is equal to the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. 
So we have our modulus is equal to 10, which is R, so dr. Now let's find the argument. To find the argument, it's basically the angle. Usually it's the angle here, but we can just use this angle and make it negative because it's going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So what we want to do is use the arctan, arctan of negative 5 square root of 2, so sine, and then over cosine, over 5 square root of 2. You can also just write this as tan negative 1, is equal to d arctan of negative 1, which is negative pi over 4. So this little bit here is negative pi over 4. Because this would actually be 7 pi over 4, because um, you're supposed to actually subtract it from 2 pi. But in this case, we know that this part here is just pi over 4, but since it's going to counter, uh, clockwise, it's going to be negative pi over 4. So that's going to be our argument. So the argument is equal to negative pi over 4, and the r, the modulus, is equal to 10. So now we just substitute this into here. Oops. Hold that back out. Um, so we'll have z. Whoa, the glitch. Z is equal to 10 times cosine of negative pi over 4 plus i sine of negative pi over 4. And there you have the polar form. And now we want to convert it into the Euler form. I don't know what color to choose, I'll just go with black. We plug in the r, which we found was 10, and then we plug in the exponents as the arguments and i. So we'll just have z is equal to 10 times e to the power of i negative pi over 4, or it's just 10 e negative i pi over 4. So that's how you found b. Now, if this is an IB question, let's go through a quick check of the mark scheme. You would probably get a point in here for substituting the u and v equations. And then in here, why is it glitching so much? In here for properly um, substituting and then combining. Um, and then the other point would be over here where you get what your w is or rather probably here, and then converting it into the um, the complex number four. So you have four points on this question, four over four. And then on B, you have three marks. So the first one would most likely go here for defining what a conjugate is, and then actually finding the conjugate of W. Um, and then for the second part, finding it in the form RE, you're first going to get a mark for finding it in the polar form. So you can show your work here, I guess. That would be useful. You can either use it, do it using the Jurgen diagram if you're a visual learner, or just go straight into it, uh, less time consuming. And then the final point will be actually finding the Euler form. So this is 3 over 3. Finally, some common mistakes to look out for would be, for example, in here where you might forget to substitute i squared into negative 1, and that would result in a um, change of signs, and it could give you another number besides 5i. Um, the next one would probably be distributing the 3w, which would make the calculations more complicated and would take you into a loop of factoring and then developing and then factoring and distributing. So that just makes it time-consuming. Um, so we said over here, well, over here, and then over here, these two. And then the last one, which would be the most common actually in the, this particular problem, would be not multiplying by the conjugate. Uh, instead, you could try to separate the fraction into, for example, 10 square root of 2i over 1 plus 10 square root of 2i, uh, excuse me square root of 2i, yeah, over i. This is wrong. You can't just split fractions like that. You can if you have an addition in the numerator and the same number in the denominator, but you can't if you have an addition in the numerator. You can, however, through splitting fraction procedures with math, but let's not get too complicated and just multiply by the conjugates. And so these are the errors that could be done here. And then as for here, I don't think you'd make any errors 
in the conjugates, as long as you know that it becomes the opposite. Um, and here there might be a problem with finding the... Why is it glitching so much? <laughs> with the arguments, um, which may lead to some confusion whether it should be this angle or this angle. Frankly, both work, as long as you have the correct conversion of those angles, either by subtracting from 2 pi or pi, or by making it negative, for example, if you get pi over 4, to make sure that it's going, because it's going on the clockwise version, clockwise side. And then, otherwise, I don't think there would be any other errors in here. You've reached the end of the video. If this video helped you, please leave a like and subscribe. We'd very much appreciate it. And if you know anyone else that's struggling with complex numbers, share this video with them. Let us know in the comments if this helped you, as well as if you want any other kinds of problems you would like us to solve and teach you how to do it. Have a nice day. Bye.